Okay, welcome back. So let's use some of those tools that we've been talking about. First of all, let's let's just find some probabilities in a contingency table. Okay, so say we've we've got a sample of 400 parts and we're checking how our manufacturing process is. Okay, so we inspect them for two things, right? Do they have some sort of noticeable surface flaw? Right? And then we run them through the test to see if our product is actually defective. All right, so here's some, some hypothetical numbers. All right, so here this would be like the joint probability of yes, they have a surface flaw, and yes, they're defective. No surface flaws, but they are defective. All right, so maybe the kind of thing we want to ask ourselves is does having a surface flaw make it more likely to be defective? Okay, so let's start finding some probabilities. Put our data over here in Excel. And here are the probabilities that we're interested in. So this is what we want to find. All right, so to find my overall probability of being defective, I'm going to need my marginal totals here. Okay, so I'm going to use this sum function. There's only two of them. I could have just said B3 plus C3, but, but that's fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and find my marginals here. We know that there are 400 total so this is my overall total here right the probability the overall probability of being defective right is my total number of defectives my marginal total of defectives divided by my total so about seven percent of our products we're producing are defective according to our test All right what if I want to find out well how many have flaws? let me go ahead and find my column marginals here all right, so that means out of the 400 pieces that we looked at, 40 of them had a surface flaw. Okay, so 400 divided by 40 should tell us about 10%, 0.1 probability. All right, what if I want to find their joint probability? Well, that's being defective and having a surface flaw divided by my total. So the probability that I get one defective piece and it has a service flaw pretty low right? two and a half percent But remember kind of one of the questions we thought we might want to answer here is does having a service flaw actually make it more probable that it's going to be defective okay so how do we find that well we need to take that joint or the number that have both a surface flaw and are defective and divide by the marginal total of whatever we're given. So we're looking for given F, a marginal total of F is 50. So it looks like a quarter of these items that have surface flaws end up being defective. Right? What if we want to find the probability given they're not defective find our joint there divided by the marginal of being not defective only five percent of those end up getting rejected as defective so we're finding almost here five times as many or you're five times as likely to be defective if you have a surface flaw all right so those are some conditional probabilities from our contingency table. Um, the other probabilities I don't think are too bad to find. Now let's think about a similar example but now using a Venn diagram. Okay, so we're going to try to find some of these intersections, unions, stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to look at this over here in Excel. So I've got really four regions labeled on this map, on this Venn diagram. Okay, and I want to look at well, what do these mean symbolically. Okay, so region one is everything here, kind of kind of cuts off, cuts off right here. Right, but region one, I'm going to call that A and not B. So what does region two represent? All right, that is their intersection. That is A and B. Region 3, 
that is B and not A. Region 4, that is A, not A, and not B. Okay, so how would I find these probabilities? Well, I've got, instead of frequencies, I have probabilities up here in the table. Okay, so region 1 is represented by A and not B. So that's 0.22. Region 2, that's the joint or the intersection, A and B. Region 3, B and not A. Region 4, that's 0.28. So I've got all these probabilities from this table now in symbol form. Now I want to use those to find some probability. So what's my overall probability here? So probability of A, all of the outcomes in A, this would be region 1 plus region 2. All right, so I would take this 0.22, everything in region 1, plus this 0.15, and it gives me 0.37. So maybe you could sort of think about this as, you know, if I was if I was throwing a dart at this at this Venn diagram here, the, what's the probability I land in, in these certain regions? Alright, so my probability of B overall, that's regions two plus three. So let me take, that's 0.15 plus this. Okay, so half of my outcomes are in here. A intersect B, right, that's only region two. So that is this. A or B, so what is A or B? That's regions one plus two plus three plus two plus three. What about the complement of A? All right, well, region one has outcomes in A, region two has outcomes in A. Okay, so this is gonna be regions three plus four. Right, this guy plus this guy. Okay, we've got the complement of B now. Okay, so the complement of B, that's going to be 1 plus 4. Alright, so 1 plus 4. And finally, we've got the intersection of not A and not B. In other words, right, that is simply region 4. Anything not in A and not in B. You could also, so region 4, we know here region 4 is just 0.28. Right? But notice what else that corresponds to. The probability of not being A and not being in B looks like it's the same as 1 minus the probability of their union. All right, so the complement of a union is the intersection of those complements. Right, that's actually a, a probability law called De Morgan's laws. Okay, so think about, so hopefully this kind of helps you visualize and picture these, these compound events, these areas, using some contingency tables, all this kind of thing. All right, so, so thanks for tuning into this, and we'll see you next time.